Have you ever seen a shark with a condition so unusual it makes you stop and wonder how it even survives? Today we're going to meet one of those sharks, along with a few others that keep moving through the ocean like nothing can slow them down. Before we get started, make sure to hit subscribe and drop a comment. I'd love to hear which shark surprises you the most, and I need your help naming one of those sharks. And as a reminder, everything you're about to see was filmed in the wild, not generated by AI. This is the real ocean with real sharks. Enjoy. Great white sharks are often thought of as the perfect design, powerful, streamlined, and built to thrive in the ocean. Watching them in clear water, it's hard to imagine anything slowing them down. Here are two sharks swimming opposite directions. The one on the left looks flawless, and the one on the right is missing its pectoral fin. I didn't realize it at first, so I focused on the wrong shark. But eventually, I would come to know this shark well. And that's when a pattern started to emerge. I began noticing more and more sharks missing portions of their pectoral fins. But not every injury is this severe. Take this shark in shallow crystal clear water. Only about 15% of its right pectoral fin is missing. The degree of damage seems to vary from shark to shark. Over time, I've come across more and more of these cases. Different sharks, different days, but the same types of injuries. Which raises some questions. Are these the result of run-ins with boats, encounters with large predators, or maybe even natural deformities? The truth is, we don't really know for sure. And then, to add even more intrigue, look at this shark. Completely scar-free. Its body nearly perfect, except for one detail. It's missing half of its pectoral fin. No obvious signs of trauma, no scars to explain it, just gone. Now, compare this shark to the one I filmed just last week. At first glance, it looks like just another case of a missing portion of a fin. But take a closer look. Do you see it? There are unique scars on its head, and the cut on the fin is moon-shaped, both clues that suggest this injury may come from another shark. Of all the sharks I've seen with pectoral fins missing, none have provided clues as compelling as this one. The clear bite marks on its head suggest these sharks engage in battles, and they are rarely caught on camera. Could these battles result in lost fins? Most likely, yes, but there are also reasons to think these injuries aren't just naturally occurring. So what's really happening here? We've seen multiple sharks with pectoral fins missing, some with clear bite marks, some with none at all. Now there's a few possibilities, and we're going to take a look at a few of those. First, these injuries could be the result of battles with other sharks. That's actually very likely. White sharks live in a very unforgiving environment, and holding your own is crucial. They can be aggressive with one another, and the evidence is clear. Bite marks, scars, and in some cases, fins partially or completely missing, often in the same shape as a shark's mouth. Now, Secondly, some injuries could come from interactions with other predators. Though, I personally think that that's less common, especially around here in California. Yes, orcas have been known to attack white sharks, but that behavior is relatively rare. Many orcas never target sharks at all. In fact, some only feed on salmon. Still, even rare events like this can leave their mark in nature. Boat strikes, there's another possibility. As we've seen all too well on this channel, white sharks do get struck by boats and they get struck often. Yet, even severe injuries often heal surprisingly well. Third, some injuries might not be trauma at all. That possibility lies in congenital issues or natural anomalies that could explain some smaller, less obvious causes, but severe injuries like missing a half of a pectoral fin, that seems unlikely to occur naturally. Finally, there's an often overlooked cause, longline and gillnet fishing. This is probably one of the most underestimated sources of injury, especially here on the West Coast. Sharks caught or tangled in these nets can bend or twist their fins trying to escape, sometimes causing the serious damage that you see. If you've followed my channel for a while, you probably know Arrow, a shark I continue to search for, last seen in 2022. Arrow very likely suffered from a long line fishing injury. Until last week, Arrow was the most unique shark I've filmed so far. Well, not if you count this one. 
You gotta see this shark because I've never seen one like this. Let's just say it defines resilience. From a distance, this white shark seemed normal, but as I watched it longer, I noticed an awkwardly bent pectoral fin. But look closer. This shark is anything but normal. It's something I've never seen before. Or maybe I should say there's something you can't see. I'm talking about its tail, the caudal fin to be exact. It's not there. Half of it is completely gone. Combined with a bent pectoral fin, it's safe to say this shark has been through a lot. Watching this shark move, you can see its swimming is a little different from the others. The missing top lobe of the caudal fin changes how it propels itself through the water. Normally, the caudal fin, or tail, provides thrust, balance, and helps the shark make sharp turns. The upper lobe is especially important for lift and stability as the shark moves forward. With half of its tail gone, this shark has likely had to adapt its swimming style. Its movements may be slightly slower, or it might rely more on its pectoral fins and body undulations to steer and maintain balance. Observations like this are exactly why scientists pay close attention to sharks with unusual injuries. Understanding how they adapt can teach us a lot about their resilience and biomechanics. It's fascinating to see nature's ability to compensate. Even with a major part of its propulsion system missing, this shark is still hunting, cruising, and somehow surviving. Surviving long-term though, that is going to be the challenge. Much like Arrow, I will continually be in search of this shark, and hopefully, unlike Arrow, I can see this shark once again in the years ahead. All right, so if you enjoyed watching this video exploring sharks with me, please subscribe, please leave a comment. It helps me much more than you know. And I need your help. I want to find a name for that shark. So in the comments, drop your name suggestions in there. I'll pick one and I'll share that with you in a future episode. And hopefully when I find that shark, I can share that name with you guys. Uh, as always, thank you to my Patreons and to my YouTube members. I can't thank you enough for supporting the channel. Until next time, you guys have a fantastic week.